Okay, so I think it's time to start. Uh, I hope that everyone is able to see me and hear me. Uh, so today I would like to tell you more about growing with the open source community, especially about last year when I joined the open source for the first time and the lessons I've learned during this year. But first of all, I'm Tomasz Urbaszek. I'm a software engineer at Polydia, which is a software house in the Poland, in Warsaw. I'm also a PMC member of the Apache Airflow project. I'm also chapter lead of the Apache local community uh, chapter in Warsaw. And I'm also quite a big fan of a few other open source projects where I try to contribute and help people make the projects better. You can find me on GitHub and Twitter using the Teurbasek GitHub handle. And yeah, that's that's about me. And what is this talk all about? So during this 30 minutes, I would like to tell you the story of one year of doing open source. And I want to put this year into 10 lessons uh, that I think that are worth knowing about the open source. And this is for people who are from outside the open source, but I think that if you are somehow related to the open source, uh, you will find this also uh, useful or informative from the perspective of a quite newcomer like me. But let's take a look at the last year, uh, quite a few months more than one year. So I'm software engineer for three years now. Uh, but last year I decided to change a company and in June 2019 I joined Polydia and there I joined the Apache Airflow team. So last year I started to contribute to the uh, open source on daily basis and I was paid for that. And at that time our team uh, in Polydia counted five people including two commuters, Apache Airflow commuters. And then I started to contribute more and more uh, in my free time. And I was so uh, surprised by the open source that uh, in October last year, I go to the ApacheCon in Berlin together with my friend Jarek from Polydia. We went there and uh, I was surprised by what I saw there because there was a lot of people who were doing the open source longer than I lived. And this was really a open. And when we are co going back to Poland from Berlin, uh, I decided that it would be awesome to have um, Apache meetup in Warsaw. So in February, 2020, uh, we established the Apache local community chapter in Warsaw, where I become the chapter lead. But in the meantime, I was also invited to become the Apache Airflow commuter. And I was really happy about this, uh, this invitation. And currently in Jul, uh, July, uh, I was also invited to become Apache Airflow PMC member. And as, to, uh, as of today, uh, our team in Polydia uh, counts eight people, uh, including three PMCs. But we also have uh, other teams that are contributing to Apache Beam project, Apache Superset, or many other uh, open source projects in the Apache Software Foundation. And today I would like to share what I've learned during this last year. And here are the, here are the 10 lessons learned after year of contributing to open source. And the first lesson is uh, quite surprising for probably for many. Uh, the first lesson is that you can be young to join open source. And I'm, as of Monday, I'm 26 years old. So I'm quite young taking uh, into account how, did, uh, did, 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 how, how people from Apache Social Foundation look like. Because participants under 24 years are represent less than 5%. And this is according to the this year Apache, uh, community, Apache Social Foundation community survey. And that was really uh, surprising because I always thought that to be able to do open source, 
you have more years than 22. And before joining the Polydia in the open source, I, I just I just thought that I'm too young to do open source. And I was surprised that there is no age limit, uh, that there's no age limit, you can have any age. But I, I'm, I was not that much mistaken from uh, from the fact that the the age has some uh, value, like, like value, may, maybe not, not it's not the best word, but it was true that people are quite older in the Apache Software Foundation because the average age of the ISF contributor is about forty years. But that's one thing that you don't have to be old; you can be young. But the second thing is you don't need experience. You don't need experience. You don't need PhD, any degree or any formal education. There is no formal requirements for you to join open source because the open source is for anyone. Anyone can join open source because open source welcomes everyone. And this is amazing because as I said previously, I thought that I'm too young to join the open source, but behind this idea of being too young, I think there is a also idea of having not that much uh, experience, that I was too less experienced to join open source. But I also learned that it's not only that the open source is for anyone, it's an amazing place for young people, for people who are still studying or are at the beginning of their career, because in the open source, you can learn a lot. And to support what I'm saying, uh, there is a quote from the, the, the same survey of the Apache Software Foundation that tells that one from 10 person has less than a year of experience. I, and I think this is amazing because it means that there are people who are trying to join open source without that much of experience. But what is more, you, don't, you can be young, you don't need a lot of experience. And what is really surprising is that you don't need to know how to code because the open source is something much more than code. Of course, we need code. That's, that, that, that's, that's not surprising because we are creating software. But we also need docs. So we need people who are able to write docs, good docs, because good docs make the projects easy to use and really, really easy to, um, to share with the others. But we also need logos. Every project needs, needs a logo and I bet not every software engineer is a designer. So we need designers, but we need them also to improve our user interfaces and user experience. And this is not only about the web application that we use in our software, but it's also about documentation pages or project web pages. So it's really important that we need those people. But we need also designers to create mascots. And for example, Apache Beam uh, have a new mascot science this year, but there is also the PLC for X toddy, which is, uh, which is quite famous in the Apache Software Foundation because uh, he's real, uh, because Christopher Dutz always carried the mascots on the uh, Apache Cup. And I think that's this diversity of needs and the diversity of skills that is required in the open source and the low entry barrier uh, that you don't need experience, that you don't have to be a specific age is amazing opportunity for everyone who wants to join open source because open source is a great place to learn. In the open source, first of all, you can get a lot of feedback. In fact, you may get more feedback in open source than in many companies because the culture of feedback is not common in every place. In case of open source, I think it's it's quite common. It's not always present, but it's rather common. And what is more in open source, there are people who are much more experienced, have more experience than the seniors, than the most senior person in your company. So you can learn from the top engineers in the world. And I think this is amazing opportunity or experience for young people that are able to work equally with those people because no one is going to judge you. The second thing about open source uh, and being a great place to learn is that 
open source provides safety. Open source is a safe place to make mistakes because no one will blame you for your mistakes. We are all accepting that you are still learning because we are all learning. And we know that learning and making mistakes, but trying to improve ourselves is really important because in this way, the community behind the project is becoming stronger and better. And finally, we have the diversity of the open source. Uh, in open source world, no one is going to judge you or your knowledge. All that counts is your contribution and your will to grow the community, to help people and to contribute. And this brings us to, I think, the really uh, inspiring quote of Ruth Holloway, uh, which is that open source is all about building communities around people who are passionate about sol problem solving problems. And I think this shows, th th this is the essence of the open source. Because if you love to solve problems, if you love to make the world a better place, you will be happy in the open source. In the open source, you will find like-minded people who also love solving problems, making people more happy or just improving everyone's lives. And talking about the people and the, the communities, uh, the next lesson is the Apache Software Foundation motto, which is community over code. And I must admit that when I joined the uh, Polydia and the open source, I didn't get it fully. Like I, I, I fully understand that there is sometimes more discussion than coding and writing code. And it was okay. Like, yeah, I know that we have to make this, this, this discussion because there is more people around this, uh, this part of code or, or interested in this part of code and so on. But I must admit that I think that I fully got it, the, the community over code approach during the Apache Con last year, uh, because then I was able to meet other Apache Airflow contributors. And that was amazing because I was able to see that they are like me. We are just people who love, enjoy the life and we are smiling and we just want to improve software and lives of the others. And I also meet, apart from a patriarchal team, I also meet people who are contributing to open source longer than I live, like 20 years, 25, 26 or more. And then I understand that there is more be behind the open source, that it's really the people who make the code because the code without the people will die. And if there is no one to maintain the project, then no one will use it because the project will die. And the next lesson is uh, quite related to this. And I think the next lesson is quite hard for young people. At last, I think it's in some moments it was hard for me because it's about value the people, not the code or any other contributions. Uh, because at the beginning of a career, you may feel attached to your code, your contribution, to your logo, to anything you create, but you have to remember that the code may change, that the logo may change, that the design of the page may change in the future. So you don't, sh you shouldn't be attached to that too much. And you have to remember that there is a lot of people and not every idea or suggestion can be accepted because it is the community. It is people who create the community who accept and reject the idea, suggestion, improvement proposals. And we are doing this because we have the best interest of the project in our hearts. And this is the way the Apache Software Foundation project works. We are voting, we are selecting the best approach. So the tip is to not get too attached to the codes, logo, or any type of contribution you do. Uh, here is an example for, uh, here is a story from, from my life when I was working on the proof of concept for uh, and an, an software uh, part of the Apache Airflow. 
And I spent one week doing uh, some research, learning a lot and having fun in general. Uh, but after this week, we as a community, we agreed that no, we, we will not accept this. We don't need it because the current solution just need few changes and it will be perfect. It will be more than what I created. And I was like, okay, I spent only a week. It was really fun. I've learned a lot. But my friend Dan spent three months on doing something similar. But in the end, we also abandoned his approach because we all understood that both approaches, my and Dan, are not better than what we have now. And we all accepted that our code will be abandoned. That was probably not that easy. We know that we have to do this. And yes, this will be the best way for the community. But I, I suppose there was a moment of, uh, wow, well, if I would know. Uh, but I think it's not only the code, but in every profession, whatever you do, uh, we, we have to learn to accept the best possible solution, best possible option, because only in this way, the project will stay up to, will be up to date and it will be really evolving and there will be less problems even if this approach the, this best approach is not yours uh, or is suggested by someone who you don't like and this move, move this moves us to to the seventh lesson which is uh about the big picture and here by the big picture, I mean that open source has many parts and only by contributing to the open source and being part of the open source community, you can see how all of them are connected and how all of them are required for the success of the project. And first of them is, of course, code. We cannot deny that the code is required in the software world. Uh, because this is the thing that makes the project work. But the second thing that is not always obvious is that there are stakeholders. We have, we have users, we have contributors, and we have companies that are somehow related to the users, to the uh, contributors. Of course, in the Apache Software Foundation, everyone is an individual. So the companies don't have that much power about the, the, over, the, uh, over the project itself. But it happens that many people are from one company and a bunch of other people are from the other company. And even the individuals may have different views and different interests in developing the project. So we need the decision-making process. We need the process of consensus seeking, which is done on the dev list during the discussion, during the planning, during exchanging ideas and suggestion, because we are discussing possible options, ways we can choose to make, to, to find the best possible solution. And in this process, all those diverse people start to work together to search for the best possible option that will be finally implemented, accepted, voted, accepted, and then implemented. And in this way, the code that is produced in the end I think it's just the mere side effect of this process, of this process of bringing people together during discussion and consensus seeking. And there are two more things about this big picture um, idea. First is that you don't, you shouldn't be afraid to ask or suggest. Voicing your concern in open source community helps community to understand that there may be a problems for some users. And this is really, a, really, in, really important for us because we don't know every edge case. We don't know every users. We are unable to do this. So getting a feedback over an idea, over a improvement proposal from users, is really important for us. And don't be afraid to suggest tools, improvements to the documentation or using some linters or things that will, or processes that will improve the way our community works. It's always welcome to see that someone doesn't agree with the current way of doing the project, that there can be, that there is a place for the improvement. Uh, and the second thing 
it's something that I think is hard to practice, uh, but we have to practice this in the open source. Uh, it's uh, about disagree, but engage. Uh, this is something that I learned from my friend Yarek, who is always repeating this, and he is good at that. Uh, the disagree but engage role is about believing that the open source project is always going in the best possible decision. It, as I said, it doesn't have to be your ideal solution. It doesn't have to be the way you would love to go. But if the majority of project voted that we are going this way and you said, no, I don't like it, I'm leaving, that's, that's not good. I would say that's like you didn't believe in the project. Because if you believe in the project, you will disagree with, you will, you are okay to disagree with people. But still, if you love the project, if you are really, you are really interested in the project, you will still engage in making it a better place. But all of that, I think, may be interesting uh, to do here and uh, maybe even inspiring. But there is a question that pops in my head from time to time, and it's, um, it's about how people from outside the open source should know it all. Like, like I said previously, when I was working outside open source, I didn't know anything about what I'm talking today. But I think there is a one, uh, one lesson that helps us to understand what can be improved around spreading the knowledge and the way of the Apache way, the, the, the way of open source to the others, to the those people who are outside open source now. And this is about learning and teaching. First of all, we should learn from the uh, newcomers to the projects, from the people who are contributing for the first time, because they are like validating that our community contribution guides, that our code of conduct or anything is okay and that we provide enough information about how the things work in the open source. On the other hand, we have to teach people because only by the teaching, we are able to share the knowledge and sharing the knowledge is really crucial for the open source project because if people will understand how things work in this project and how open source work in the general, they will be able to share this knowledge with the others. And in this way, the community, the amount of people that are able to speak and manage the project will grow. And the next thing is that we need to support people. We need to support users. We need to support contributors because if we don't give them helping hand, they will go away from the open source they will go away from the project. The experience from, we, we, we need to remember that the experience from one community will be carried to another. So if someone feels that is unwelcome in one community, he may feel that they are not welcome in open source at all. And that's something that we definitely don't want. We want people to feel that they are welcome in the open source and that they are free to voice their concern, ideas, and any possible things that can be implemented in the project. But having the sharing knowledge and supporting people, we need also spreading the word about the open source because the only way to share the knowledge is talking about it. It's writing and it could be blog posts and, and taking the conferences and so on. But I think it's also important to talk with your friends. If you have software engineers or people that can be interested in the open source, it's amazing to talk with them because as I said, people think that the open source is much more different place than people think that, that it's in reality. My friends were really surprised uh, when I started to work in Polydia and being engaged in the open source because they, like me, thought that this is the place where we will be able to enter in few years because we need some experience. And now I can see that those same people, my friends are more willing to contribute to a back fix or a fixing a typo in, uh, in documentation. It's not that they are starting to finding those things. No, 
they they saw them in the past. Now they know that they should create a PR and improve the community. And what is more, they are also seeing that if they want to learn, for example, a new programming language, they can find an open source project written in it and just start contributing and learn from the experts, not on their own, but from people who know what they do. And finally, I think that, that if you don't know how the open source looks like, it's really hard to engage. It's really hard to become a part of something that is unknown to us. If we don't know how the communities work and how the open source work, we'll not be able to join any open source project. So the next thing, the next lesson I, I think is, is really important is about creating and looking for an opportunity to engage people in the open source. Of course, we as a communities, we should do meetups, we should write documentation, blogs, do workshops, we should spread our knowledge in, the, in every way we can. But here I would love to focus on something uh, else, something that is that can be done externally. And I want to talk about the opportunities that can be created by companies. Uh, because previously when I was outside the, the open source, I always thought that uh, that companies doesn't support open source, but it's not true. So first of all, I think that if you heavily use open source software, open source, open source tools, I think that you should consider giving your employees some time to contribute or even open sourcing your internal code because in this way, this code, this tool can be improved. And of course, you will gain some fame about being part of the open source. But I'm also sure that you will learn a lot doing open source stuff. We in Polydia have a few of our own uh, Bluetooth libraries that are open source, and we are learning a lot. But speaking about fame, I, I think this is really, really valid point because, for example, the app, everyone who is a user of the Apache Airflow probably knows that Apache Airflow was first created in the Airbnb as a uh, internal project and then open, open source it to the Apache Software Foundation. But apart from giving back, I think we should also ask for a uh, possibility to contribute to open source. And I think that many employers don't think about giving back to open source. So probably if you know that you would love to try this and that you know that you have some code that can be open source internally or that you would love to improve the project you use, I suggest you to speak with your employer and suggest that, hey, I would love to uh, spend some time on doing the open source. And I know that uh, some companies, even in Poland, uh, have uh, something that is called Open Source Friday or uh, once a month, uh, open, source, uh, open Source Hackathon. I think Asking for possibility to contribute in your work time is, is, is a really good idea because doing the open source, you can gain a lot. You will learn more and you will gain new skills. And all of that leads us to the last lesson of, uh, of my talk, which is about uh, the fact that you can be paid for the open source work. It's true that the majority of contributors is comes from the, 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 the majority of contributions comes from people who do this in their free time. But well established projects need paid maintainers because it's I think it's the only guarantee of the maintenance of the project and guarantee of future of this project. Without that the project will die and people will be left alone. So Having people who are paid at least for a few hours for maintaining this project is really, really important. We need to understand that open source is done in the, by people's hands. It's not generated. That's people behind the open source. And as I said, you can be paid uh, for the open source in the full-time manner as I'm, I am. And few other companies also do this. It's Red Hat, Google, Microsoft, and my company, Polydia. But also it can be paid for the, uh, the part-time. Like I said, 
it's really amazing idea uh, to ask um, for uh, for the for the possibility to work on open source in the in the on Fridays on once one, one day a week. But as you can see, those companies, it's not like they have enough money to pay for doing open source. I think there's something more. It's something that those companies have in common, and it's that they understand that the open source runs everywhere. What we create in open source, especially in the Apache Software Foundation, powers every company around the world. And I think that by funding and being actively involved in the open source, we gain as much as we give. And this is the last lesson uh, of, of the 10 lessons of the, uh, of that, that I've learned in the last year doing open source uh, full time or even more 24 hours a day sometimes. Uh, if you would ask me, uh, what is the most important lesson from all of those 10? I would say it's uh, the third one, the, that the open source is a great place to learn. I think it's more important to know than the community over code approach, because once you know that the open source is a safe place to learn and to grow, you will learn if time being about this community over code approach, and you will be able to appreciate this approach. But this lesson also allow you to learn more. You will, once you know that you can learn in open source, you will learn everything I mentioned and even more. And that's all that I have for you today. I would like to say a big thank you to everyone who was here with me. And now I think that we still have a few minutes for questions. So if you have any, please put them in the chat and I'm happy to, to answer. Thank you. I see that there, there, there is a, uh, I'm not sure about the, 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 the message from Owen, but yeah, it happens that sometimes when you do contribution, it's not always accepted. And I think it's really important to emphasize uh, that we need to take another look for like being young in the open source, allow you to see what problems young people and people who are not related to open source meet on their road to becoming open source contributors. Uh, I see the question about are you mentoring others now to help them on their open source journey? Yes, I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to share as much as I have learned from the open source by speaking in the conferences, writing blog posts, orals, and also, as I mentioned, sharing my knowledge with everyone uh, in my case, about it's, it's mostly about designers and software engineers, but I love to spread the awareness that open source is for everyone. And if I would have a possibility to, to help someone with, uh, with open source and bringing them to, to the open source, I'm really happy to do this. Of course, I'm not mentioning the, uh, the, the, the reviewing peers and helping people with, uh, in the Apache Airflow community. I think that, okay, so I will, I will read the, the, the question. So do you have some advice on deepening your knowledge on the code base? Any tips you have learned? The greatest tip is to read the code. Uh, but uh, I think the, the, the good starting point is to review the peers uh, to see how people, what is changing now. But then if you want to deepen the knowledge, you, you have to play with the code base. An example in the patch airflow, we are always laughing uh, in our company that you need six months to understand how the Apache airflow works under the hood. And this is really true because there is a, you first of all need to play with the tool. And once you play and you see, observe a problems or you are interested how the things work, you start looking into the documentation and then in the code. 
Personally, now I'm always looking at the code because this gives me the full understanding of how things work. And the, the second, uh, the other question is, how do you start from picking a project to making your first comment in the project? Uh, this is quite interesting because um, now I'm picking projects. Uh, I'm not picking projects because it's usually the projects I contribute are somehow related to what I've heard or uh, to what I saw over the internet. So for example, there was a, I was uh, at the conference last year at the Warsaw, Cloud Native Warsaw, uh, where I heard about a project which is called Kida. And I started, I, and we needed some from Kida in the uh, Apache Airflow. So I decided like, wow, this is, that can be interesting opportunity to contribute there. Also, I wanted to learn Golang. So I started to look uh, around the, the, the code base. Uh, I understand something. And then um, I, I tried just to open peer and get some feedback. But I think it's, uh, if you are not, uh, I think it's, it's okay to select projects that are smaller, but comes from foundations. I think from my perspective, I think that the Apache Software Foundation have, uh, for me, a better feeling or as a community than, for example, CNCF projects. Uh, is, is Apache Incubator the best place to start? I think uh, if you are considering to donating the project, yes, this is the only place you can start in the Apache Software Foundation. Uh, if you want just to start contributing, I think that any open source project is a good place. But what I value when I look for the project is that I see that the community is active and that the community helps the others. Because without that, engaging with these communities will be hard. And as I'm maintaining one project, uh, I not always have uh, time to to, 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 to to work with the other projects and changing things and improving. I, I think it's, it's, it's okay, but I always try to, to point, to, to give some feedback or leave some feedback that I think that some things can be improved in the contribution process. Thank you. I think that we still have uh, three minutes, I think. So I, I'm happy to, uh, to answer. Thank you, Swapnil. Thank you, Eric. Yeah, I, I definitely uh, agree that you should uh, attend the, the, the talk of Jarek Potuk tomorrow at the ApacheCon because Yarek will tell more about what we do in the Apache Airflow to make the community, our community more welcoming. And I think uh, this is the lessons I was able to learn is in many parts due to being part of the Apache Airflow. Okay, so if there is no more question, I think that we can end this session sooner.
Oh, uh, I, I will be sharing the, the, the my presentation with uh, on the drive of the Apache Con. So, Jose, if you have missed something, uh, please take a look at the, the presentation. Yes, and the, this talk is going to be recorded and will be available on the uh, ISF uh, YouTube channel. Okay, so thank you one more time, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this and it was a real pleasure to be able to speak for the first time at the ApacheCon, even if it's online. See you all. <laughs>